Hi, it's Mark Robbins, contributing editor at Halifax Presents. We are live once again at the Carlton in our final show of this special pandemic series, and boy, we're going out with a bang. Our guest tonight is the writer and performer behind the music project Museum Pieces, a self-described rocker and gifted athlete. He was pulled from a Montreal basketball court by Wynn Butler of Arcade Fire in 2007 and went on to assist on numerous projects for the band before returning to Halifax to, pre Halifax to perform his own music, including his 2018 East Coast Music Award-nominated album, Plain Sight. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the Carlton stage, Tyler Messa. Evening, afternoon, good morning. I'm gonna do a song called uh, We Search for Arrowheads off of one of my earlier albums. And before I started, I just wanna acknowledge all the change that's happening. And when I wrote this song, I didn't quite understand what colonial imperialism was all about. I, I had been on a archeological dig and found a bunch of artifacts. And there's a lyric in the song about um, going back to the hotel and like reading the history of the area and not quite understanding the, the pain and the, and the suffering that the, the English and the, uh, you know, the Europeans had brought with them. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to a better future where uh, there's more equality, just to say that. Not to pay, say that this song isn't promoting that, but I just wanna be clear. I also wrote this song in a very dramatic uh, open tuning on the guitar, uh, more suited towards bagpipes and stuff, but I'm gonna try and do it in standard tuning, just like a folk style. We search for arrowheads Ancient shards are just a sliver we turn the earth And then we wait for rain By the banks of the Hudson River Back at the hotel Reading history books And feeling guilty Sending runners to claim the land for liberty. Lene Lenape, Sesquahanna, and Cree. Lene Lenape, Sesquahanna. Ladies and gentlemen, Tyler Messick. Tyler, thank you so much for joining us, uh, joining us today. Uh, we appreciate it. Thanks very much for dropping by. Um, in the introduction, I mentioned you were pulled from a Montreal basketball court by Arcade Fire's front man, uh, Wynn Butler. Uh, can you tell us the story there? Yeah, well, it was uh, after multiple times seeing each other. Um, he had recently moved to Montreal uh, from the States, and I'm from the States originally. 
and there's a style of basketball played uh, in the States as opposed to kind of a Euro uh, style. And he recognized immediately that I was um, from the States and he asked me to be on his, his little team that he was putting together. Uh, there's like a grit and there's like a feistiness to uh, American playing. Um, the other Euro style is great too, but it involves a lot more passing, a lot more team centric, whereas the, the uh, States style is a lot more, uh, I'm gonna be a hero. So he, he, he took me as his uh, Batman Robin kind of thing. He's, um, he's quite big, so I, I played his point guard to his big man. And then the two of you formed a friendship and? We formed a friendship and we eventually traveled all over the world uh, playing pickup basketball because he's in a, you know, arena, arena rock band and we, we took our own rim and if we were in Chicago, we would go play on notable courts there. I mean, we played amazing games all over Central Europe, Croatia, Serbia, Slovenia, all these places have amazing basketball traditions. So we, 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 we loved it. And, and who was the better basketball player? Be honest. Uh, he's, he's better. I mean, if, if it's a, I like to, you know, we talk about best basketball players in the world, we like to have the examples of the aliens come down and you have to nominate one player to, I mean, it's going to be LeBron James, even though Allen Iverson's faster and has more panache, but uh, Wynn's actually bigger and can shoot the three and go inside. Uh, I have a consistent shot. I can play good defense and pass, but I would say he's better. Uh, then you came back to Halifax and performing your own mu mu uh, music, um, and you started Museum Pieces. Can you explain what Museum Pieces is all about? Yeah, it comes, there's twofold uh, explanation. I grew up in a museum because my mother was a, a curator at a museum, a local historic site in small uh, rural Pennsylvania. And so, you know, all the events coming home from school, getting ready for school was always surrounded uh, in a museum setting. And then uh, same with my dad, he was, they were separated, but he was also in um, museum-like business. Uh, he's a professor. And then um, more viscerally, I find, like if you go to the MMA, the Maritime Museum of the Atlantic, and you see the Age of Sail ropes, or if you see like the dories and you see the, the wood, and you can just tell you know, for hundreds of years, people have been rubbing and they've been, you know, putting their hammers on things and touching them. You get this visceral, in the moment feeling of how those objects were used. Um, and I find that music does the same thing, it has a temporal outside of time quality, but it draws you into a time and a place like the museum piece does. That's great. Um, we're going to come back and have a, another chat in just a minute, but you have another song for us? Sure, yeah. <coughs> I'm gonna do uh, hitchhiking with your photograph. It's off of plain sight. And this is a true story of uh, my friends and I hitchhiking on, down by Liverpool, South Shore, Nova Scotia, and the fog became too much, and we had to spend the night on the side of the road because nobody was on the highway, as is frequent in the summers in the Maritimes. <laughs> was coming down, the rain was coming down, the mosquitoes were at us, 
The boughs of the pine trees held our guitar cases just to block us from that, and I was just staring at a photo at the time. I've waited so long to show the others my soul. This time I'll try rock and roll. Just pushing the plow Oh, the rain's pouring down It won't t stop me now Yeah, you're right along I got your photograph Right along, making me whole Yeah, you're right along Right along, I got your photograph Ladies and gentlemen, Tyler Messick. Uh, thank you so much for that, Tyler. Um, we were talking about the fact, or you were mentioning you were, you were from the United States. You grew up in Pennsylvania. Also very much a Canadian. Obviously. Also very much a Canadian. Okay. <laughs> Dual, uh, uh, you moved up here when you were 13 years old for, with your mom. What brought yeah. you to what brought you the family to uh, Halifax? It was affairs. I mean, it would be all over the, the scandal rags. It was affairs, divorce. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, <laughs> and you uh, you mentioned uh, playing basketball. Was music and basketball or sports always part of your life, or uh, did one take over? Obviously, music took over for you. Did you plan on playing in the NBA at some point? I've always been too little. I mean, uh, I'm very adept at sports, but when it comes, I played in leagues up until men became giant men. You know, a pro athlete is a, is a giant person, and I've been around a lot of pro athletes, and they're not like us. So I, I never had aspirations to be a pro athlete, but I can kick it with them. You know, they appreciate me. I, I played with a lot of NBA players, and they, they call me scrappy, and they, they call me, you know, different things that are uh, likable terms. But I always played music. I always made little tapes for myself at home. I had a little cassette thing, um, did my own radio shows. But I always had a ball and a wall, and that's how I started with sports, was just, probably because the marriages around me were disintegrating, so I had to go out and just hit a ball against the wall, right? And you still have a ball and a wall? Yeah, I actually do. <laughs> During COVID, I found a parking lot, and I just hit a tennis ball against it. Yeah, so it was great. Uh, we all need something to, to pass the time during the pandemic, that's yeah. for sure. So you found your ball in your wall again. Uh, what's next on your set list for us today? Well, you were, uh, we were talking about Bob Dylan before, uh, before the show started. And um, I went down to see Bob in New York uh, this, this October, this, this past year. And uh, it was a real special moment. Um, when you brought that up, I wasn't going to play this, but I thought I'd play a few seconds of it just to show that my uh, love for Bob is deep. I encourage everybody to read the New York Times article that uh, Bob was just interviewed. Maybe it's the weather, something like that. The crossroads they're covering, these crossroads they're covering. Maybe it's the weather, or something like that. Mama, you've been on my mind. When you wake up in the morning, Look inside your mirror, I won't be next to you. No, I won't be near. I'm just wondering if you can see yourself as clear. Someone who has had you on his mind. Something like that. That doesn't have to be a full song, but 
Ladies and gentlemen, Tyler Messick. <laughs> Just a reminder, we're live at the Carlton downtown Halifax. Don't forget, if you can, please leave a tip. A uh, link to the PayPal is in the description of the video. Uh, during these tough times for our artists, uh, I'm sure Tyler would appreciate it. Uh, Tyler, I, I found an interview online you did with Ben Kaplan uh, for the East Coast uh, music hour at uh, Sappy Fest back in 2016 mm -hmm. and I loved some of the questions that Ben asked you at that time so I thought maybe what we would do is uh, update them and find cool. out if they've changed. I have the the answers from 2016 <laughs> so I'll, we'll find out if they've actually changed. So uh, what has been your most satisfying, oh before I do that I gotta pick, put a picture of you and Ben back in 2016 up on the screen here for everyone Two years to later see. Ben uh, Asked and uh, was very uh, very nice that he did. And he asked me to open for him for a bunch of shows. I did the Rebecca Cohen, which is in Halifax, is a, a big honor. It's a big a big soft seat theater. So after that interview, he actually went on to work. We went to work together. Oh, that's great. Was great. So thanks to him. Uh, so the first question he asked you, or one of the questions he asked you, what has been your most satisfying musical moment? What's that? <laughs> okay, I'll go with that one. I mean, there's so so many infinite ones. My partner, Georgia, uh, reminded me last winter. I love going around to small towns in Nova Scotia. Um, uh, so we went to New Glasgow, which is my uh, my good friend and singing partner Virgil's hometown. And there was a, uh, a gentleman who had opened kind of a boutique. It was a small private club, uh, an antique store. It was all kinds of different things. But we went in there. And it's an underserved community as far as uh, you know, music. So we went in there and had just a wonderful night and connecting with people from the North Shore, South Shore, um, you know, Eastern Passage. You know, all, I just love going to small towns. So I would say any time I got to connect with people in uh, rural Nova Scotia. It was pretty close to what you told Ben. You were talking about a performance you did at Ammon Hall. Oh yeah, that was, uh, yeah. So I played with Isaac and Blewett and they have a place in uh, New Brunswick called um, Al, yeah, the Alma Hall, which is an 1800s era, like all wood, you know, hall. It was beautiful. And that was special because uh, Tim's partner, who was a ceramist, is that how you say it, a ceramics person? Uh, but uh, Tim Isaac is a potter, and his, uh, his partner, uh, Nina, is a harmonium player. So we had an incredible jam that night. Um, Tim plays cello, Nina on the harmonium. So shout out to Tim and Nina. Uh, as a singer, what's the most important thing? Uh, fear, lack of. I mean, that's my biggest thing. I don't look at myself as a singer, so I have this. In I have to just kind of go through a fear-based mindset until I'm open enough to just be in the moment and give what I got, because it's a give and take with an audience. When I'm home alone, I usually just play guitar and have somebody else sing. Um, just you know, it's the sound of your own voice kind of thing. I'm sure everybody <laughs> goes through that, but. Do you remember um, what you said to Ben back in 2016? What, are, what was the question again? I forget. Uh, the most important thing is a singer. Oh, uh, no, I don't. I would imagine probably like looking over the audience's head or something. I no, know. singing in key. <laughs> 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 I, mean, like, I guess that goes without and, saying at this point. And you both had something to say about the younger people that don't seem to have gotten that one yet. So well, That uh, particular day, I had another uh, <laughs> that. I said that because uh, Jeff Riley, who's a producer at CBC, was there at Sappy, and he told me, oh, it's so nice to see somebody singing in key after my set, which was a compliment, I guess, so. <laughs> uh, then he asked you if you could open for anyone dead or alive, who would it be? Yeah, I mean, uh, his Bobness is, is, uh, is always out there. Uh, I'm, I'm very thankful that he's still around, so I'll go with Bobness. And your favorite motto? I like this one. See if you remember what you said back in 2016. <laughs> um, I know I was sleeping in my car a lot in 2016, so I was probably like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you mentioned that in the interview, actually. I, I, <laughs> I was in a slightly different mindset then, so uh, it's funny. The ones that are coming in my mind now are so, because I've been doing a lot of march, not a lot, but I've been marching for equality and you know the environment and slogans from those marches are coming out. Um, I, right now, I just have to say my favorite motto is equality. Let's just keep it simple. 2016, it was play hard. Play hard. Play See, hard. It's, things have changed. <laughs> thanks for, thanks for uh, indulging me on that. That, yeah. that was great. Uh, do you have another song for us? Uh, yeah. I might not do the whole thing. It's a bit of an indulgent tune, but 
I wrote this one uh, after long after meeting Win, and I, I took over uh, managing the studios for the band, and so I got to stay and live at their famous studio where they recorded a lot of their albums. And there was a long, it was, it's, it's in the rural townships of Montreal, so it's long country roads, long winding roads to get there, long arcs where you can kind of put your imagination ahead of yourself. I come from a long line of salesmen Just one look into my eyes And you know that it's true A stream of sunlight hits the carpet of my hotel room. I throw my drink into the bush and get on with what I gotta do. Whoa, whoa, yeah, yeah. See the furtive glance in the eye of the fawn. That's the mystery that keeps me hanging on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's a bend up ahead between the fields out on Four Mile Road Where I see the limitlessness of life and think about my good name And there's a curse of doubt passed down by the men of preceding generations Failure distilled into a drop and put right into my veins He's got it all That's the mystery It keeps me standing tall Should I retreat to the last high ground on some mountain range? But isolated without anyone else around, wouldn't that feel strange? I come from Salesman, just one look into my eyes, and you know that it's true. Ladies and gentlemen, Tyler Messick. Thanks, everybody. Uh, Tyler, um, before we get to the final song, you were we were talking about things to, to chat about tonight, and one of the things that you had mentioned to me was um, your relationship to the Carlton's programming director, Mike Campbell, who actually happens to be in the room tonight. He just left. Oh, okay. he just left, so he's not going to be here to hear this I story. Think but know who he is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what was the story behind uh, you and Mike? It's not really a story. It's um, you know I lived off and on in Halifax for 25 years, so uh, Mike's been a fixture here for at least that long. And playing music, he's um, he's on the scene because he's an appreciator of music and he's a curator of music. 
uh, and I enjoy his taste, he enjoys my taste. Um, and we bonded over a few very specific artists. Uh, I could name a few, but it uh, doesn't really matter. But the, the fact remains that um, I just really appreciate where he comes from. He, t he, told me, he tells me lots of stories. He grew up working in a record store in Ottawa. So um, it's just really nice to hear music industry, music fandom, um, you know, spiritual connection to music. Uh, and Mike's uh, that, and that's it. You know, he shared a lot of music with me that I didn't know about. Um, we were talking before we went live that he lent me a lot of LPs, and yeah. Well, he's done a lot of work in terms of uh, getting everyone in, including yourself, for uh, these Live at the Carlton uh, yeah, series. Yeah, he means a lot so to me, and uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, what's next for Tyler? I mean, I know that things are a little bit up in the air because of the pandemic and that yeah. sort of stuff, but what, what have you got planned? I'm sweating because I get nervous. Uh, sorry for all the face wiping, but uh, I'm uh, really into archaeology. I'm really into history, so I'm, I'm uh, finishing my history degree at Dalhousie right now. Uh, I'm going to go back online in the fall, so I'm a few credits away from that. And I want to go on some gigs. I want to uh, help reveal some more indigenous uh, historical background here so we can start to elevate uh, them to the status that they should be, which, you know, leadership status. And um, yeah, I, I have a bunch of albums in the can that I recorded at Awesome Studios in Montreal. So um, those I work on at, uh, in the times that I have at home. Um, it's complicated because I, my time gets divided with music when I get to the mixing stage because I'm such a, a nerd for all the uh, EQing and the technical aspects that make this turn into an album that you can hear. It's there's a lot of technical hurdles, and I've slowly tutored myself how to do that. I'm self-taught on the instruments too, so it, it just it's something I like to do. I like to. So I'm just understanding so much about recording and mixing, and then mastering, and then the production. So uh, I have three or four albums in various states of uh, readiness. Any idea when your next album will be out? It's just a matter of time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to get to another song, but before we do, I wanted to thank everyone for tuning in tonight for our final broadcast from the Carlton in this pandemic series. Huge thanks to Tyler for being with us and sharing his music. Don't forget to leave a tip if you can. You'll find the link in the video description. As I mentioned, this is the last in the special series uh, at the, live at the Carlton. It has been one of the best experiences that I've had in a very long time. Uh, we hope to be back again soon, but for now we're going to take a break as the Carlton reopens with live music tomorrow, Thursday, June the 25th at 4 wow. p.m. precisely. You can find out more information about the reopening and upcoming live music, yes, live music, uh, once again, uh, on the Carlton's website at thecarlton.ca. Finally, a huge shout out to everyone behind the scenes at the Carlton who helped make this all possible, including Mike Campbell, Wendy Phillips, and especially the sound engineer, John Cornwall, the Carlton's owner, Karen Spaulding, and my partner, David Hannigan. Stay safe, Halifax. Keep your distance. Wash your hands and come to the Carlton. Opens tomorrow. And that's now, so once cool. again, Tyler Messick. Yeah, it's been a weird time not having live music. I mean, that's when I'm really bottled up and feeling confused, seeing the power of, uh, of a kick drum or, the, or somebody singing always snaps me out of it, brings me back to that ancient quality of druids around a stone hinge or whatever. You know, they were making music, I'm sure of it. So it, it draws me back into some sort of realism. All right, I'm going to do a song about astral projection. That's the only time I've really gotten a chance to see my ancestors. Uh, so I've vis been visited by my um, grandparents a few times. Very visceral experiences. That's what this song is about. Yeah, I also want to just double up what Mark's saying about um, coming down to the Carlton. The best shows I've seen in Halifax, uh, you know, the top ten, you know, at least half of them are, have been here at Huff and other really great artists come in here, so do come down. Irradiance Come closer Tale village 
It's magnetic. Ah, baby. My body's heavy, but my mind is light. Dream right. Astro weeks and endless nights. Staying awake where there's no copyrights. Visit the dead from the family I love. They pat me on the back in my glimpse. Beyond above. Beyond above. It's like spirits. I'm slowly sipping. Ah, ah. Are you in this life or the next? Ah, hey, hey. My body's heavy, but my mind is light. Dream right. Astro weeks and endless nights. Staying awake where there's no copyright. I visit the dead from the family I love. Beyond above Beyond above Astro Weeks Not the Van Morrison album Thanks, everybody. <laughs>